Eric Gonzalez. Uh, I'm an engineer at Udacity for um, nearly three years now. It's been a long time. And I've had an opportunity to work on some really interesting projects. I've worked on Android, I've worked on some web apps. Um, we built this global code review network. Uh, and the really exciting project lately has been, like the past four months or so, um, our self driving car. So if you're unfamiliar with the project, I think this quote from Futurism gives a, a good idea. It actually plans to build an autonomous vehicle and completely open source level design. This isn't about charity or generosity, it's about education. So you think of Yassi's entire goal, and a lot of the reason you're here today, um, is because this is a growing industry, and we want to be able to, ideally, 10x the number of engineers that are available to join. And oftentimes, it's very hard for people, especially if you're interested in this field, to get into it, because the hardware is very expensive, it's difficult to access, um, a lot of this information is proprietary, um, or hidden away in companies, so we want to be able to open source as much as possible um, to make you successful in the AI degree. And one of the ways we're doing that is through a series of challenges. We want to encourage a community around helping us build an open source self-driving car. And uh, you'll see a lot of these challenges are things that we need for the actual hardware of the vehicle. Like if you look at challenge one, it's a, a 3D model. We need a way of mounting our cameras. And we had a student that had 3D CAD skills that helped us generate a model. And we printed it and we open sourced the design. If you look at challenge two and three, their uh, interesting approach, John Chu is an interesting approach to steering, which Mac will tell you a little bit more about and some of the results from that. Three is also, again, a, a low cost way of us doing localization. And I think so, some of the results have been really promising despite the challenge not being complete yet. And it's a cool way that students can collaborate and work together and try to compete on these specific uh, challenges. We rank them, there's prizes awarded, there's a lot of incentive for students to join and, and contribute to an open source project. And of course, at the end of it, um, we don't hide anything away, everything is distributed, and you can see the results. And it's great seeing students contribute and, and build to these projects. And I'm always impressed by seeing what we're able to create together. It's very interesting. So in order to be successful in the challenges, you need access to data, and often a lot of data. And so a lot of times you think about, like, there's not a lot of open source self-driving car data sets. They're often very large, like if you think of our vehicle, if you collect, um, consider the total amount of sensors, we have roughly three gigabytes a minute that we collect. Uh, in compressed formats, that's 300 megabytes a minute, but still, it ends up quite, being quite a lot. Um, we also have everything available in open formats, uh, which is important. You'll see a lot of times people don't distribute these because they're, they're difficult to collect. Um, and we have everything available in a very open ROS format, which is great. And so some of the results from the data that we've been publishing, which is LiDAR, it's uh, every sensor available, it's multiple cameras, you'll see that it ends up being quite a lot. We have over 12 hours of driving data, um, and this is not our starting point, we're continually adding to this. So hopefully by the time you finish your NAND degree, we'll have significantly more. But we've had a great reception to the initial data sets we've published. We've been able to track over uh, 400 terabytes downloaded by students and people just interested in the self-driving uh, car community. So one of the things we're announcing today is the release of an annotated data set. And you'll see like on the internet you can find there's annotated sets for, for signs, for pedestrians, but it's really hard to get access to those even though they're open. You generally have to register or request and kind of state a reason why you need it. In our case, all this data is going to be available. It's under an MIT license. It won't be behind a wall that you have to like get approval for. And uh, you'll learn later on in your NAND degree how important these labeled data sets are, especially if you start to dig more into machine learning and to classifiers and like how this is prove useful. Uh, the total amount is one hour of driving. And within that one hour, we have over 150,000 bounding boxes, which is crazy, even though we're sampling at roughly two hertz here. So it's uh, pretty impressive. and. Uh, it's something we built again with our, our student community to have this human antidote of the set. Uh, um, we're paying them, of course. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. Um, so to tell you a little bit more about the results from our challenges, uh, I'll have Matt come up soon. Slack if you're at all involved in the challenges. I come from a 
bit of a different background, uh, the defense industry, a lot of stuff that flies, drones, that kind of thing. Um, and I've come on to Udacity as a self-driving car engineer as well as helping lead the open source development effort of the, the car itself as well as doing some more systems engineering type things for, uh, for hardware, which is always, always really fun. Um, I'm here to talk about, like Eric said, what the challenges are and, and what their real purpose is, why we're doing it. And to go into that, it's really about overall the democratization of the code and the hardware behind building a self-driving car. And while some of that is allowing you know, everyone access to the resources of the actual vehicle itself, a lot of that, a lot of the main thing that we're trying to do is actually get all of you students involved. And that's put up some pretty impressive numbers. We've had over, it's much higher than 500 students, but that's what we can confirm for sure of that has actually contributed code to testing and trying to validate the self-driving car. We've had over 200 neural networks that are trying to steer the vehicle, six Android apps to allow humans to really intuitively interact with the car itself, and 10 camera mounts for students. You know, that was our first challenge to just get out there and make something freely available to anyone who wants to put one of these types of things together or someone who wants to start a company or get employed at a company so that you have you know, access and ability to work with, with these types of things. So going directly into the challenge and the idea of democratizing access to self-driving car hardware, uh, a lot of the main theme is moving away from really expensive sensors like LiDAR, um, and which also kind of come with really expensive data sets that you have to build. So you can have LiDAR, but to localize yourself to it, you have to have a ton of maps, and it's very difficult to build these maps and put them together. So we're trying to move away from that, give the power to more on the software end, on, on cheap camera, the side of cameras. And for this first challenge, it was really focused on using deep learning and camera to build an end-to-end -end steering solution. So what that means is essentially you get a image frame, uh, you put it through a neural network, and out comes just a steering angle. And you can see up here, there's actually a little indication of what this particular student submitted neural network is estimating to be able to drive the car around these lanes. And this isn't really new. Um, there's been you know, kind of forays into this type of software since the late 80s of using a neural network to drive a car, but it's seen a recent resurgence, um, partially due to the expense of LiDAR, but also due to uh, the fact that convolutional neural networks can learn their own set of features. So human software programmers don't necessarily have to learn what a lane line is or how to program it you're able to just put a ton of data at the problem and then let the car learn how to drive itself. So that's cool, but you also kind of think about some of the issues that come with that and it's some of the things that you as students, and if you haven't yet, you'll learn how to address the issue of, well, how is the car going to recover if it goes out of the lane? Because you know we're not driving around San Francisco, going into the other lane and trying to make mistakes. We're showing the car how to correctly drive. So that brought us into moving into data augmentation um, setting up a camera array on the inside of the vehicle, as well as a simulator that actually allows the car to make its own mistakes, accumulate its own error. We can rotate, pitch the image, if you saw with Yusuf outside, showing how that actually works, and allow students and yourselves the tools to download and on your own build these algorithms that can actually test whether or not you can drive a car without necessarily having to have physical access to the car. So that's another aspect of how Challenge 2 has really brought something that's really big and complicated and deep learning and given it to the ability of anyone to get up and start and to get moving on actually some creating these solutions. Uh, kind of in that same vein brings us into challenge three of moving away from sensors and going to cameras away from LiDAR. We're looking at image-based localization. And the point of that is, again, taking an image frame from a camera and figuring out where you are in the real world instead of using something like LiDAR that's very expensive and tough to get and allows you to actually figure out where you are. Um, the cool thing about this, and what I'm really excited about, and what a lot of us at Udacity are really excited about, is the large multitude of different approaches that we've seen students take to this. We decided to be less prescriptive with this challenge. Uh, we had kind of an idea of how we knew it could work, but we wanted to see what everyone could come up with. And we've seen everything from structure for motion approaches, to things like this, which is actually using deep learning to estimate the distance traveled by the car in each frame um, and creating a whole probabilistic roadmap and everything to more like image matching type stuff, which is what we expected, but it's really cool because we're getting to see everyone's different background. Like every single person here has a different background. They're able to bring all these different aspects that isn't necessarily the traditional robotics approach 
to building a self-driving car. And that's one of the cool, really powerful concepts, I think, of this program in general and, and what we're able to do. Uh, this is an example of a student submission that uses the traditional image matching type stuff. And while you might think, you know, it might be kind of confusing as to, you know, isn't, you know, is a lower res image like this have a high enough, enough data to actually match to figure out where you are at the same kind of granularity as LiDAR, and, and we're actually seeing from people just like yourselves uh, that that is possible, and that you guys can create some, some really, really cool software. And while a lot of this might seem kind of intimidating, and for those of you who start, haven't started the nano degree yet, it might seem like I don't know how to do this at all, um, but a lot of these people didn't know that either, and we're really excited to see as you begin learning these concepts, as you get exposed to these, what ideas that you can bring to the table and what ideas you guys are actually able to come up and start submitting to challenges. Because while we've already had these two, um, there's gonna be a lot more and they're gonna get bigger. And we wanna see what ideas you guys bring to the table. And as that first class, like Sharna was saying, with those you know, 300 people, we wanna see uh, what you guys can contribute to the open source car and, and this effort in general. Thanks, appreciate it.